everybody, it's Miss Christy, and I'm teaching the lesson today. But before we get started, let's go over what Obi taught us last Sunday. Obi said that Jesus was on a mission. He was given a mission. Do you know what his mission was? Yes, it was to save sinners. But who are sinners? I heard me. What about you? And everybody. Everybody are sinners, and everyone needs Jesus to save them. So, let's talk about our lesson today, and we're going to use the Bible to dive into some truth. Okay, what is today? Easter Sunday, that's right. And on Easter, we celebrate Christ rising from the dead. So, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for us to dive into my resurrection eggs. They'll tell us a little bit about the last days of Jesus' life. They'll also tell us about the crucifixion and him rising, his resurrection. So let's dive into these eggs. And as we do, I need you to tell me what's inside because I need some helpers. All right, here's egg number one. What is this? Up, oh, I heard somebody say donkey. Good job. Mark chapter 11 verse 7 through 9 says then they brought the donkey to jesus and threw their clothes on it and he sat on it and they spread their clothes on the road and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road then those who went before and those that followed cried out saying hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord now let's move on to the second egg these make noise. What do you see, guys? I heard coins. I also heard somebody say money. You're right. Matthew 26, verses 14 and 15 say, Then one of the twelve disciples, the one called Judas, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand Jesus over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins. Judas was willing to portray Jesus for money. Now let's move on to the third egg. Looky here, what do we have here? Oh, I hear tummies rumbling. Yep, you're right, it's a cracker. Matthew chapter 26, verse 18 through 19 says, And Jesus said, Go into the city and to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. The cracker represents the unleavened bread. Now here's our next one, egg number four. I know, you can't see that, so I'm going to give you a real-life example. We use this with water, and we should be using a lot of it right now. Yep, you're right, it's soap. John chapter 13, verses 4 and 5 say, So he got up from the meal, took off, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. That's such a nice thing he did. Now let's move on to egg number five. What do we have here? Yep, you're right, it's a cup. Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28 say that then Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And egg number six, it has, what does that look like to you guys? You're right. Did I hear someone say praying hands? Good job. Mark chapter 14, verse 32 and 35 through 36 say, Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus went a little further and fell to the ground and prayed. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. 
Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus was willing to complete his mission, but he wanted to double check with his father, God, and make sure that was still his mission. Okay, now let's go to egg number seven. What do we see here? A small strip of leather. You guys probably said a string or a rope. Okay, Matthew chapter 27, verse 2 and 26. Say they bound Jesus and they led him away, handed him over to Pilate the governor. And then they were he released Barbarus to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Now, flogging means to whip. That doesn't sound like fun, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, egg number seven has something in it. It might be a little hard to see, so I'm going to give you a hint. Jesus had this on his head. Yep, you're right. It's a crown of thorns. Mark chapter 17, verse 17 through 18 says, Then the soldiers clothed Jesus in a purple robe. They twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head and began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They were mocking Jesus. And mocking Jesus means they were making fun. And that's not nice. Okay, you guys should all know what this is in egg number nine. Yep, it's a cross. Now look very closely. What do you see in that cross? <gasps> Nails. John chapter 19, verse 17 through 18 say, And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, where they crucified him, two other with him, one on each side, and Jesus in the center. This cross with nails represents Jesus dying on the cross. Now in egg number 10, we have a die. John chapter 19, verse 23 through 24 says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without a seam, so that means it was all one piece. And they said, Therefore, among them, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. Egg number 11 has this. Yep, you're right. It's a linen cloth. It's a piece of fabric. Matthew 27, verse 59 and 60 say, When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. He was taking care of Jesus, even in his death. Now here's egg number 12. What do you see? That's right. It's a stone or a rock. It was a really big one, but we have a small one. Matthew 28, verse 2 through 4 says, And behold, there was a great earthquake. Let me hear your rumbling. Stop those feet, guys. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door. And he sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. And the guards shook with fear, shake for me, and became like dead men. <gasps> Let's freeze. Okay, now for most resurrection eggs, that would be it. But Miss Christie, she likes a baker's dozen. So that means there's a 13th egg. Okay, this one, we need to open up and look very closely. What do you see? What? There's nothing in it. Matthew 28, verse five and six tell us, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Guys, Easter's about Jesus rising, and this is an awesome thing for us. So let's 
give thanks to that. And remember that the Bible has God's word in it, and it is true. And Obi also gave us a verse that we need to remember to memorize. So let's work on it today. It says, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. That's found in John chapter 17, verse 3. Now let's pray before we say goodbye. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and fold your hands. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. And thank you for saving us from our sins. Help us to remember your words and study your words and place them in our heart. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. Moms and dads, if you would like to do this project with your kids, I have also added a link that will have everything I read and the Bible verses. And then I also gave you clips of the items that I made just in case you can't find the items around the house. You guys have a great Easter Sunday. See you later.